Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley Jenkins. And I'm Ryan Haywood. The truth is maybe out there, everyone. A team from the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, otherwise known as SETI, the official group of international astronomers looking for aliens, has launched an investigation into a potential alien signal coming from deep space. That is not a joke. That's true. No, this is actually happening. The mysterious signal was made public in a just published paper by a group of researchers, uh, researchers, even out of Russia, which was then distributed by a chief SETI astronomer who calls it a strong candidate. Uh, the discoverers are also saying that the signal is significant enough to recommend permanent monitoring of the target. With SETI now officially on the case, the signal is making tons of headlines all over the internet claiming that this might be the one. But as for whether or not we're on the brink of paying homage to our new alien overlords, well, that part is up for some mega debate. There are a number of reasons why this new signal is being given some interesting weight. Uh, certainly enough weight to spark SETI's interest in monitoring. But uh, there are plenty more reasons why this probably doesn't amount to much. Because let's be honest, we've all been burned by this type of thing before, or twice, or three times. There's always aliens and they're always not aliens. I never thought I could love again, but there's always hope. Uh, this super special signal was found by Russian Academy of Science operated Rattan 600, a radio telescope in May 2015. Uh, for some wacky reason, they decided not to share this with the international community of astronomers and instead opted to wait until the paper they started distributing in the last week. How hard was it to keep that secret? And we get random radio signals from space all the time because space is weird and full of celestial bodies blasting out electromagnetic energy. But this particular signal was a peculiar radio wave that gave them cause to think it was artificial due to its strength and its high frequency. The signal also loves long walks across the beach and makes its way to us from a star known as, well, it's a very pretty name, HD 164595. Ooh, romantic. Uh, yes, we've got uh, to come up with a better name for that. Pretty quick. Pretty quick. Well, for now, we'll just call it Heedy. Yeah, uh, it's also 95 light years away, so, you know, it's maybe 6.3 billion years old as well, so yeah. All right, all chance. right, all right. And the super interesting thing about good old Heedy in the Hercules constellation, well, it's actually very sun-like. Which is the key thing that makes astronomers so curious about this signal in particular, regardless of the numerous reasons for skepticism. At 95 light years, that's just a, you know, hop, skip, and away, galactically speaking. I mean, it's no second Earth. That one's only like four light years away. That's, that's practically awesome. next door. Right? We should borrow In sugar. galactic terms, it is. If another civilization was there, it would only take a 190 year turnaround to send and receive a message, which again, sounds like a long time, but it's really not when you're talking civilizations trying to communicate across the vastness of space. It's kind of like, you know, that those dots that show up when you know someone's texting only for like two centuries. Yeah, that's some plain hard to get. Mm. The power and age of old Heedy also make this potentially exciting at 6.3 billion years. It's fairly close, again, cosmically speaking, to the age of our sun, which is around 4.6 billion. Plus, it's got the same metallic composition and it's almost exactly the same size. And many scientists say that if it was possible for us to have solar twinsies, it would be Ohiti. So that means that if there's a habitable planet in range, right now we only know of one planet in the system that could be way too hot, it's feasible that a civilization there would be on a scale somewhat relatable to our own in terms of technology. Although, to send a signal of this power across 95 light years would put them way ahead of our own capabilities. Scientists have created a scale to measure the advancement of civilizations, known as the Kardashev scale. There are three types of civilizations according to it. Type 1 is able to fully use the resources of its planet, which we almost are. We're almost Type 1! Uh, type 2 is able to fully utilize the energy of its entire star, and Type 3 is able to fully, fully use the energy of its galaxy. On the scale, we're just below a 1, which is how stupid humans are compared to what might be out there. That makes you feel a lot better. If this alleged signal was beamed directly to us, that would make them a Type 1, but if this was yeah. a wide broadcast sent in all directions, the type of energy required would put them in at least Category 2. Yeah, it's, it's much easier to send a directed signal uh, to someone in particular, but I'm assuming the reason that we speculate that it is a wide broadcast is because we're moving. So if we're still receiving they the signal... They would have had to know 190 years ago where we would be now. Granted, that and plus, I mean, there's uh, there's some wiggle room there when you're talking about 95 light years. If you're firing out even a narrow beam communication, by the time it gets that far out, it's gonna spread a bit. It's gonna come. But it's very strong, which means that it's if it is directed, then it was a tighter beam uh, that would have 
uh, not spread as much. That's why it could actually reach us with a, uh, a weaker recordable signal. signal. Yeah. Sure. Uh, regardless, uh, the proximity age and somewhat close technological capabilities would make this the trifecta of possible alien besties. Or frenemies. Well, uh, nah, look, don't listen to... Uh, who is it? Stephen Hawking, who says that they're, if they're aliens, they're probably going to come kill us. I mean, statistically speaking, I would. That's not great. Uh, so the idea that there may be signal coming from there at all is what's got people so excited, regardless of some of the evidence that's been piling up against it. And evidence there is. At the moment, there's quite a bit of reason for doubt. For one, we haven't done the most basic principle of science. We haven't repeated the initial results. As of yet, the signal has not been observed again. Which is why it's so problematic that these Russian astronomers broke protocol and didn't share the signal immediately with others who could use better tools to verify Damn it. Damn it, Russia! You messed it up again. Uh, a year and a half later, we might have missed a window. This was perhaps a one-time signal. That's no answer. That's fine. We'll just try again in a millennium. In addition, the type of telescope used by the Russian astronomers is not ideally suited to observing this particular type of signal, which some claim might have diluted it. The type used also cast doubt about the exact origin point of this signal. Another problem. Hmm, yeah. SETI has now pointed its better equipped Allen Telescope Array in California, plus another in Panama at Hedy, <laughs> to see if more activity happens in the long term. We can totally make Hedy happen, Hedy? right? Let's make it happen. Hedy. Oh, Hedy. Uh, both of these, especially from different angles, would be able to help pinpoint any signal and give a better idea exactly where it was coming from. Over the last few days, they haven't seen anything, but that's not really definitive proof that there's nothing there. Other counter evidence against the signal is that it's incredibly easy for terrestrial signals to mess with equipment here on Earth. It's actually happened a number of times, creating false alarms. Even the Russian Academy of Sciences, where some of these findings originated, said the most likely case was that this was from here on Earth. What a bummer. Human aliens, that's no fun. Mm -hmm. However, other astronomers have noted that nothing on Earth is broadcasting at this particular frequency, unless we're talking about some crazy secret military stuff, which, again, I guess is possible. Yeah, man, even the military likes reruns of I Love Lucy. Uh, so the basically, the TLDR of all this is, scientists observe something interesting, but don't get your hopes up too much until we see it again. Because, you know, we've been through this whole song and dance before, both with the original famous wow signal in 1977, and even more recently with fast radio bursts. So it's on again, off again with this science. Mm. But the problem is, all of these reasons to doubt would be persistent, even if we ever did see what was eventually determined to be a definitive alien signal. Sadly, when it comes to space, there's actually very little of that we are able to understand because our knowledge is just too limited. We're still super new to this. Yeah, so, you know, keep hope alive, all you who want to believe. Because even if an alien signal bit us on the ass from super far away, it you know, probably kind of looked the same to us as anything else. Well, what do you guys think about the mysterious space signal that SETI's monitoring? Let us know in the comments. And for future updates on the search for alien life, like this video and subscribe to the know. We'll let you know if we find them. I really should have been wearing a tinfoil hat for this whole thing. We don't have enough tinfoil for that. There's not enough tinfoil in this building. You saying I have a big head? Yes. Oh. But also, we don't have a lot of tinfoil. Oh. It's like a one-two sort of thing. better. Man, love will really break your heart, won't it? Yeah, soul aliens.